We are going through the book of Romans. Uh, we have, I haven't counted them exactly, but either four or five sermons left uh, in the book of Romans. And then uh, after that, I announced it last week, uh, we, will, we will be going to the book of Revelation. And we are going to walk through that. And uh, I'm excited about that study. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans 14. Romans 14, last week we covered the first 13 verses in Romans 14. Today we will cover verses 14 through 23. The title of the message to today is Consider One Another. Consider One Another. And there's three points if you want to look in your bulletin and want to go along with us. Number one, walk in love. Walk in love. Folks, I cannot tell you how important love is. And I think you will see today with the scripture that we are going to cover, uh, love is everything. Love is everything. And God's love, Jesus' love, not man's love. Okay? Number two, walk in righteousness. Because we are saved. We need to uh, be right with God. We need to walk in holiness would be another word. And number three, walk in grace. We have received God's grace, so we need to extend grace to others. You know, as we continue in Romans 14, Paul addresses Christian liberty, which we spoke of last week. The Bible tells us that we are free of many things in Jesus Christ. The three big ones are freedom from sin, freedom from death, and freedom from hell. And we need to thank God for those three freedoms. While we are able to enjoy those freedoms, there are other freedoms that we are not obligated to exercise. I have found out the greater our love for people and the more we grow spiritually, the less important some of our personal freedoms are. Paul is still talking about the babes in Christ who haven't had time to grow in the Lord and mature in their faith. Sometimes we as strong Christians do not extend grace to weak or new Christians. We do not need to discourage, uh, discourage others that haven't been taught the Bible as much as we have. Our fellowship with others is important, so we need to encourage others by giving love and grace to all who God puts in our way. The key is not to compromise our convictions while lovingly encourage encouraging new Christians. So let's look at Scripture from Romans 14, verse 14. I know, and I am convinced by the Lord Jesus, that there is nothing unclean of itself. And we covered this last week. And I want to emphasize again, we are not talking about uh, doctrines here. We are not talking about God's laws. There is no compromise with doctrines. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that saves us. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. All those are doctrines which we believe, and we will defend our doctrines. We're not talking about God's laws either, okay? God's laws are set. The Ten Commandments, thou shalt not murder. We need to, to obey those. Thou shalt not commit adultery. We need to obey those. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Ooh, watch it. All right? <laughs> we need to tell the truth. So this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about everyday life things. You know, sometimes we as Christians, and listen to what I'm saying, major on the minor things in life. And you have to understand, Paul is talking to the Roman church. Paul is talking to Romans, the people. He is talking to Jews. He's talking to Gentiles. Gentiles were not raised in the laws of the Old Testament. So out of ignorance, many times they did things, and these Jews would get on them for that. And again, folks, he is specifically talking today about uh, a meat that has been used to sacrifice on pagan idols. And again, there's nothing wrong, and, and you will see what he is saying. But notice two words here that I think are important. I know, okay, we as Christians need to know what we believe. 
We need to know that. And the second part is, I know and I'm convinced. Convinced is conviction. Conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. So we aren't backing down from what we know and what we convicted of by the Holy Spirit, but in that, there needs to be that balance of grace for those who weren't raised in church. For I know I'm convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean itself, but to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. And what he's saying is, we don't need to be arguing over whether you're going to eat meat or not. Hey, if you want to be a vegetarian, be a vegetarian. I don't have no problem with that. There's many of the Old Testament dietary laws that if we would follow, we would probably be more healthy. But again, it's a personal decision. It's a personal decision. I personally prefer meat, okay? I was raised, and I'm and folks, it's not wrong to eat meat, but I was raised on meat, bread, potatoes. Those what I, I, I we're, I'm from Oklahoma, and we had gravy with a lot of meals. All right? So you just let me be who I am in Christ, and I'll let you nibble on the celery and the lettuce. Okay? Just, he, and folks, we laughed, but last week it was the same thing. So this was a huge thing in the church at Rome. And Paul was saying there's two things that happen. Number one, the strong Christians are, are criticizing and getting on the ones that weren't raised that way. And then the, the weak ones or the new Christians didn't understand. And, and again, they were getting on the legalistic. They saw that as legalism. And folks... God has put us all in this church, in God's family, so that we can get along and love one another and extend love and grace to others. Now look at verse 15. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. And that would be like the strong Christian says, says to the person, well, I really don't care what you think. I'm going to do it anyway. Folks, we need to consider one another. We need to consider that, as I spoke of in uh, the, the Scripture and in last week. 1 Peter 4. Look at 1 Peter 4. I want to give you some scriptural background on this. 1 Peter 4. But the end of all things is at hand. Hey, it is, folks. We're near the end, folks. I'm waiting on the rapture of the church. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. I wonder what would happen if we turned our complaints in our arguments into prayers. What if we, instead of criticizing somebody, prayed for that person? You know what I found out and I know is a fact in my own life? I can't criticize someone I'm praying for. If I have a burden for that person, I'm not picking their lives apart in trying to tell them, you need to live like me. Even the Apostle Paul in a couple of texts said, follow my walk. But I'm telling you folks, I'm not there yet personally. All right? I say, follow Jesus' walk. He was perfect. And look at verse 8, and above all things, he had a list there of all things, that's all encompassing there, have fervent love for one another. Oh, I'm telling you what, folks, if people come into our church and sense the love of God here, they will want to worship with us. And notice here, it says fervent love. He could have said, uh, uh, have love for one another. But he says fervent, all right? That means serious love. That means enthusiastic love. That means genuine love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Folks, we are all sinners. We all make wrong choices at times. 
But we don't need to be criticizing one another. And again, even if we are correcting something that somebody has done, we need to do that in love. Not as judging them. Not as being judgmental. Not as putting them down. Not as discouraging them. Because there are, folks, new Christians that were not raised in church and they don't know these things. And as they grow in Christ, they will understand our doctrines and God's laws even more. So he tells us to love one another. Now look back in our text, Romans 14, the rest of that verse. Do not destroy with your food the one whom Christ died. Let me put it in plain English. There are hills you don't need to die on. Okay? You just don't need to bring everything up that comes to your mind. All right? And that is a problem that I have at times. If it's on my mind, it's out of my mouth. And sometimes as soon as it comes, it comes out of my mouth, I think, man, I shouldn't have said that. And again, I don't cuss. I really don't. Uh, you believe me, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but folks, it's not, it doesn't have to be bad things. It's just things that could be left unsaid. And the, what I'm thinking of, choose your words wisely so that you will not destroy a new Christian to where they feel like, I can't live up to this stuff. I wasn't raised that way. I can't. And, and a lot of times, it's habits. It's habits. And so, so here he is just saying, man, let things like that go. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians 8. Paul, just in Corinthians, specifically speaks of being sensitive to others. 1 Corinthians 8, now things concerning offered to idols. We know that we all have knowledge, and knowledge puffs up. And that's what I'm saying earlier. Knowledge is us knowing it. Conviction is conviction from the Holy Spirit. But even knowledge, uh, you know, we can, uh, you know, list our uh, spiritual resumes at people. And folks, I'm all for education. I'm all for knowledge. But if it puffs up, then it is proud. We as Christians need to be humble. If, but love edifies. Love edifies. And that's what we need to be doing as Christians, edifying one another, not pick, picking each other apart. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. If you think you're the smartest person in the room, you are probably not the smartest person in the room. That's my, that, I mean, that's my interpretation of that. Because there's somebody in that room that is smarter, and that's the Holy Spirit, folks. That is God, and that is Jesus. You're not going to change them. You're not going to beat them in a spiritual argument, okay? But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. You know, there are some, there are some ways, and let me give you this example. Some folks have to love others. It takes work to love them. And again, I can't imagine someone in this church not loving me. I just can't imagine. I don't want any hands right now, okay? It's a wrong time. But folks, if you know my heart, if you know what I stand for, if you know uh, uh, just my you know, spirit, you would realize that, hey, He's not perfect. He's not always going to make the right call. But I'm telling you, he loves God, and we need to love one another. Look at verse 4. Therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and there is no other God but one. Okay? Idols. We don't have a problem with idols. All right? We don't have a lot of idols, uh, you know, like they used to in those days. For even if there are so-called gods, notice the little g, whether in heaven or earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom all things, and we are him. 
We know who our God is. Capital G, Jehovah, God of this Bible that rules the universe, that spoke this world into existence. And one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through him we live. Folks, that is doctrine. Everything we believe about Christianity is surrounded by God and Jesus Christ. However, there is not in everyone that knowledge. For some with consciousness of idols until now eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. They have not put those two things together. As they grow in the Lord, as they spend time in the Word, as they're in a Sunday school class or a small group time, or one-on-one -on -one mentoring, somebody mentoring them, it's going to click one day. And then it says, but food does not commend us to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat are we the worse. And I'm just telling you, if you take your pastor out to eat, man, if you, you know, if you want, I don't, I don't care what you eat. And don't be looking at my plate, especially if we go to a buffet, all right? And that's what Paul, Paul is saying, man, we have these little things, these little idiosyncrasies that would just, just let it go, folks. Don't let it affect your relationship with one another. Folks, here's my, here's how I decide, okay? And I wrote this down. When I am in doubt, when I am not sure whether I should be doing that or not, I don't do it. I want to say it again. And let me put it this way. When in doubt, do without. Just don't do it. Because I'm just telling you, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. The Holy Spirit will be clear. And we are not junior Holy Spirits. You, you don't sign up for that class, okay? Because there's not one. It is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit capital G, capital J, capital H, capital S, which is deity. So if you're not sure, you know how you can be safe? Just don't do it. Just don't do it. That way, there's no questions asked. So we need to walk in love. Number two, we need to walk in righteousness. In righteousness. Look at this next part. And folks, now he gets down to living in the world. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Spirit. Again, he mentions, don't worry about what is on your plate. What we need to worry about, what is in your mind and what is in your heart. Because you first think it before you act on it. So if we can get our mind thinking the way God is thinking, then we'll make the right decision every time. I am telling you, uh, just this week, I went home, and I was with two of my sisters, and I had a great time, stopped in Oklahoma City, seeing my aunt, saw another cousin going back through. But I got a call Christmas from this guy, and he was in my youth group when I was a youth minister at Cameron. And I could tell there was something bothering him. And he said, Mike, he says, I want to come and talk to you personally. I want to come. This is right around Christmas and visit with you face to face. And I said, his name is Juan. And I said, sure, Juan, that's not a problem. Well, his father, or he found out his father had cancer. Okay, and, and in that, uh, he, he just has been totally tied up in that. So when I got ready to go, I called Juan up and I said, hey, I'm going to be in Lawton and I can talk to you after me and my sisters have a meal together. And to make a long story short, he spent two hours with him talking and he, through all that, was giving me his spiritual uh, inventory. He was saved uh, when he was in the seventh grade. But he had all these things happen. He did two tours of Iraq, all right? He saw things, and, and now he is 47 years old. And here's what he said to me, when all is said and done, I don't know whether I'm saved or not. 
And so, man, when I heard that, I jumped all over that. Because what people do is give us their spiritual resume. When on his face and on his countenance and in my spirit, he was saying, this guy, he's not saved. And I'm telling you, we kept talking, and I got to lead him to Jesus Christ in my room on Wednesday night at 10.30 in the evening. And folks, I got to thinking about that. I went to see my sisters, but God had bigger plans than that. And sometimes we let little things get in the way of big things. You know what the biggest thing about life is? Folks, it's being saved. It's knowing that you're saved. It's knowing, because, man, you know, I use the line that I always use. Okay, you're standing before God. Are you sure he's going to let you into heaven? And Juan said, no, I'm not. And when he said that, tears just started rolling down his face. And afterwards, I'm telling you, he had the biggest grin and the biggest smile on his face. And folks, we can't let these Little things keep us from the main things, the main things. So with that, look what it says in the second part. If that's if these little things are things we don't need to be doing, what do we need to be doing? Look at verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That is what we need. These three things we need in our lives. What is righteousness? Doing the right thing. Being holy. Walking with God. Pleasing God. We need to be peacemakers. What does it say? Blessed are they, the peacemakers, for they are the what? Sons of God. So we need to be doing righteousness, teaching righteousness, uh, emulating righteousness. We need peace of God in our life. And the third thing is we need joy. It was so obvious to me that Juan had lost his joy. He didn't have anyone. When he came in, he was so sad. He was so downtrodden. And folks, joy of joy comes from the Holy Spirit. Joy comes from knowing that you are saved. Joy comes from helping others. Joy, joy comes from security of the believer. Look at verse 18. For he, he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable God, to God and approved by men. Folks, I'm telling you, when you do these things, God is well pleased with you and other people know you are a Christian. Folks, we need to be about these three things. Hold your finger there and go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3. Colossians 3, verse 12. Colossians 3, 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, as a Christian, holy, there's that word. God is holy. Jesus is holy. It's called the Holy Spirit. We need to be holy. And beloved, put on, as we put on clothes to come to church today, these are the characteristics that need to be in our lives. Tender mercies. Having mercy. I know what some of you say, well, I don't, I don't have the gift of mercy. I don't have to, have, if I, I don't have to show mercy because I don't have the gift of mercy. You know what I found out about the nine gifts? There's some time in your life that you'll need to use all nine of those gifts. All nine of them. Doesn't mean it's your main gift, but situational ministry. I'm telling you, there are times you need to, you need to use mercy, even if that's not even on your radar. Kindness. Oh, we all need kindness. Humility. We talked about that. Meekness. It's not weakness. It's self-control. Long-suffering, we all need patience. We all need to show patience. Bearing one another. Forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against, his, against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you can do. 
that what your Bible says? No. So you must do. And folks, we as Christians, there's two things that people will notice that we are Christians by the love we have for them and by being able to forgive others. Folks, people mess up. Don't hold a grudge. Don't be bitter. Don't, don't make statements that you'll regret later on. Now look at verse 14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. The Bible says in 1 John, God is love. And we need to love. The Bible says Jesus loved us so much that he died on a cross for our sins. And if we are going to be like God in Jesus, we need to perfect love in our lives and hearts. And here it is. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you are also called into one body and be thankful. And be thankful. Oh, folks, we have to walk in righteousness. We have to walk in righteousness. And you know what the key is? Right there, the key is listening to the Holy Spirit. And don't listen to all these voices and other things around you. Folks, I, I am just telling you, we are so in, you know, that there's just so informa much information out there. There are people that just wear me out with information. Just wears me out. <laughs> I was eating with one of my cousins, and, you know, we're talking all along, and I was talking to his mom, and this whole time, I was only with them for an hour. <laughs> Folks, not everything that you see on a computer or on your phone is true. And some people take it for fact. Okay? And I don't, I'm not saying we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't have our heads buried in them, is what I'm trying to say. Give grace to others. Listen to the Holy Spirit. And most of all, Put on love. Now let's look at the last part, verse 19. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things which may edify one another. Folks, if it's not edified, don't let it come out. Just don't say it. Don't say it. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. Three times in this text, he emphasizes what we do sometimes. We major on the minor things. All things indeed are pure, but it's evil for a man who eats with offense. And that's with an attitude, with, you know, I really don't care what you say. I don't really care what you do. Folks, we should care. God cares. God cares, so we should care. It is good neither to eat meat or drink wine or do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. We can actually hurt someone's spiritual walk by our attitude and our lack of love for one another. Verse 22, do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. And again, he's talking about mature Christians here, the ones who have faith, those ones who demonstrate faith. Don't be Lord over all, okay? Don't, you know, and again, folks, I will defend doctrine. Okay, I will defend God's word, but I'm not losing a brother over a minor issue. And it says, have it to yourself before God. Do you have faith? Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. You want to be happy in life and you want to have joy in your life. I am telling you, you do business with God. You get close to God. You walk with God. You tell other people about God and let others take care of themselves. Accept others. Verse 23, But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever uh, is not from faith is sin. And folks, we all, again, uh, you know, we all sin. We are all sinners. There is no one perfect. There is no one that does the right thing every time. 
nobody. So we need to understand God has uh, put grace and God has given us grace. For by grace you were saved. And that's the beginning of grace. And we need to extend others grace. And folks, I truly believe this. We can shut the door on salvation to others when we are judging them and when we are high and mighty and when we bang them over the head with the Word of God. Man, I'm all for the Word of God. The Word of God is everything to me. But we don't have to hit people over the head with it to get their attention. You know what, you know what most people are looking for? You know what they are? They're looking for genuine Christianity. They're looking for someone who actually totally believes what the Bible says we ought to be doing. And you look at this world right now, folks. This world is evil. It's evil. And we as Christians need to stand out and quit worrying about what someone else is doing and let us give our testimonies and tell people about Jesus and have open lines of communications with these new Christians and people that have not been in church like us. Folks, your attitude sometimes is the deciding factor. God gave you grace, and you need to give grace to the other. And there's two things. Not only you need to let the Holy Spirit guide you, you need to let the Word of God guide you. Do what the Word says. Get close to Christ. Make everything a matter of prayer. 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5 tells us, pray without ceasing. Now folks, we should always pray before we go visiting and Pray before we share the gospel with someone. Pray that the Holy Spirit would take what we know, what we share, and that would convict their hearts that they need Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I close with this. 1 Corinthians 13. I know you know it, but we need to, every once in a while, remind us how important love is. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I become of a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. People are not going to listen to you if you do it from hate and animosity. And if you do it, uh, you know, like you're more spiritual than anyone else. And though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. And look at the characteristics of love. Folks, these are the things that we need to do. Love suffers long. It's patient. It's kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up or arrogant. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity or sin, but rejoices in truth. Truth is the Word of God. And look at verse 7 and 8. Bears all things. Folks, if we love one another, we love one another, we can go a long, long, long way in the body of Christ. Bears all things, believes all things, Hopes all things. Folks, give people the benefit of the doubt. You can't read their mind. You don't know exactly what they're thinking. Endures all things. And I love these three words. Love never fails. Folks, we need to consider one another. We need to love one another. And if you're here today, without Christ, I am telling you the greatest need you have is to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you were to die today, are you sure you would go to heaven? Father, thank You. Thank You for the Apostle Paul and 
thank you that, uh, God, your word is plain, God. Man, we're in the body of Christ. We have an obligation. We have a message. You have given us revelation. We know. We have knowledge. We know who you are and what you're about. And we have conviction from the Holy Spirit. And God, I pray that we could put all those things together for your honor and for your glory. So God, I pray that love would override many things in our lives. God, love is so important. It's the strongest emotion a human has. God, thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son to die for us. Oh God, I pray we would consider one another. And God, I pray we also would consider the lost. Every day we pass by people that need to know God's love. So God, I pray that we would have compassion and we would have concern for others. God, I pray if anyone needs to rededicate their life today that they would do that. If they need to come for baptism, that they would do that. They need to come and and join the church. God, I pray that you would just uh, talk to the hearts, speak to their hearts through the Holy Spirit. And God, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?